Chapter 33, Sections 291 through 302. The Union of Heaven with the Human Race, Section 291. It is acknowledged in the Church that everything good comes from God, and nothing of it from us, and therefore that we should never take personal credit for anything good. It is also recognized that evil comes from the devil. This is why people who talk from the doctrine of the church describe people who are acting well and who are talking devoutly and preaching as being led by God and say the opposite about people who are acting maliciously and speaking blasphemously. None of this could happen unless we had a union with heaven and a union with hell and unless those unions were with our volition and our understanding, since it is from these that the body acts and the mouth speaks. We need now to describe what this union is like. Section 292. There are good spirits and evil spirits with every individual. We have our union with heaven through the good spirits and our union with hell through the evil ones. These spirits are in the world of spirits, which is intermediate between heaven and hell, and will be specifically treated later. When these spirits come to us, they come into our whole memory, and from there into all our thinking. Evil spirits into the matters of memory and thought that are evil, and good spirits into the matters of memory and thought that are good. These spirits are totally unaware that they are with us. Rather, as long as they are, they believe that all these matters of our memory and thought are actually theirs. They do not see us either, because their sight does not extend to things in our subsolar world. The Lord takes the greatest care to prevent spirits from knowing whom they are with. If they did know, they would talk with them, and then the evil spirits would destroy them. For evil spirits, being united to hell, want nothing more than to destroy us, not only as to spirit, that is, as to our love and faith, but as to our bodies as well. It is different when they do not talk with us. Then they do not know that we are the source of what they are thinking, and what they are saying to each other, since they talk to each other just the way we do but believe that these matters are their own. They value and love whatever is their own, so these spirits are constrained to love and value us, even though they do not know it. This kind of union has become so familiar to me through years of constant experience as to be commonplace. Section 293. The reason spirits who are in touch with hell are attached to us as well is that we are born into all kinds of evil so that our first life is made up of nothing else. Unless spirits of the same kind were associated with us then, we could not live or be led out of our evils and reformed. So we are kept in our own life by evil spirits and restrained from it by good spirits. Through the two kinds, we are kept in a balance. And since we are in a balance, we enjoy an appropriate measure of freedom and can be led out of our evils and turned toward good. This good can be sown in us as well, which could never happen except in our freedom. And the freedom could not be granted us unless spirits from hell were acting on the one side and spirits from heaven on the other, with us in the middle. I have been shown that to the extent that we exist from our hereditary nature and from ourselves, we could have no life at all if we were not allowed to engage in evil. We would also have no life if we were not in some freedom, and we cannot be compelled to good. Anything compelled does not become part of us. I have also been shown that anything good that we accept in freedom is sown in our intentions and becomes virtually our own. This is why we have a communication with hell and a communication with heaven. Section 294. I also need to describe the nature of the communication of heaven with good spirits, the nature of the communication of hell with evil spirits, and the nature of the consequent union of heaven and hell with us. All the spirits who are in the world of spirits are in communication with heaven or with hell. The evil ones with hell, and the good ones with heaven. 
Heaven is differentiated into communities, and so is hell. Every spirit is a member of some community, is sustained by an inflow from it, and therefore acts in harmony with it. This is why we are united with heaven or hell, just as we are united with spirits. We are actually united to some community there, the community we belong to in respect to our affection or our love. For all heaven's communities are differentiated according to their affections for what is good and true, and all hell's communities according to their affections for what is evil and false. On heaven's communities, see above sections 41 through 45 and 148 through 151. Section 295. The kind of spirit that is associated with us is determined by the kind of person we are in respect to affection and love. Though good spirits are assigned to us by the Lord while we ourselves summon the evil ones, the spirits with us change, however, as our own affections change. This means we have one kind with us in infancy, another kind during our childhood, another kind as we are growing up and in early adulthood, and still another kind in old age. During our earliest years, spirits who are in innocence are with us, that is, spirits who are in touch with the heaven of innocence, the inmost or third heaven. In later childhood, we are in the company of spirits who are engaged in an affection for knowledge and who are in touch with the ultimate or first heaven. As we are growing up, during our early adulthood, spirits who are responsive to affections for what is true and good and therefore with intelligence are with us. They are spirits who are in touch with the second or intermediate heaven. In old age, though, spirits who are in wisdom and innocence are with us, spirits, therefore, who are in touch with the inmost, or third heaven. Still, this association is arranged by the Lord for people who can be reformed and regenerated. It is different for people who cannot be reformed or regenerated. Good spirits are assigned to them as well in order to restrain them from evil as much as possible, but their direct connection is with the evil spirits who are in touch with hell. This means that the spirits are of the same nature as the people they are associated with. Whether they love themselves or money or revenge or adultery, the same kind of spirits are with them and are, so to speak, taking up residence in their evil affections. To the extent that we cannot be restrained from evil by good spirits, they inflame us. And to the extent that an evil affection is in control, they cling to us and will not back off. In this way, evil people are united to hell and good people to heaven. Section 296. The reason we are controlled by the Lord through spirits is that we are not in the pattern of heaven. We are in fact born into evils that are from hell and are therefore exactly opposite to the divine pattern. This means that we need to be brought back into the pattern and we cannot be brought back except through the agency of spirits. It would be different if we were born into the good that accords with heaven's pattern. Then we would not be controlled by the Lord through the agency of spirits, but through the pattern itself, and therefore through a general inflow. This general inflow determines the way things move from thought and intent into act, and therefore determines our speech and actions, since these both do flow according to a natural pattern. So the spirits who are with us have nothing to do with these processes. Animals are also controlled through a general inflow from the spiritual world because they are in the pattern proper to their life, a pattern that they can neither distort nor destroy because they do not have a rational faculty. On the difference between humans and animals, see above section 39. Section 297. To continue with the general topic of the union of heaven with the human race, we need to be aware that the Lord flows into each one of us according to heaven's design, into our inmost natures as well as into our outmost, and disposes us to accept heaven. He controls our outmost natures from the inmost and the inmost from the outmost at the same time, and in this way keeps everything about us in coherent connection. This inflow from the Lord is called a direct inflow, 
while a second inflow that happens through the agency of spirits is called an indirect inflow. The latter is sustained by the former. The direct inflow, an action of the Lord himself, is from his divine human. It comes into our intentions and through our intentions into our understanding. This means it comes into what is good in us and through that good into what is true in us, or, which amounts to the same thing, into our love and through our love into our faith. It does not happen the other way around much less into faith apart from love or into truth apart from good or into understanding apart from volition. This divine inflow is unceasing and is accepted in what is good in good people, but not in evil ones. In them it is either rejected or stifled or distorted, so they have an evil life that, spiritually understood, is a death. Section 298 the spirits who are with us, both those united to heaven and those united to hell, never flow into us from their own memory and consequent thought. If they did flow into us from their own thought, it would seem to us exactly as though their character was our own. See above, section 256. However, there does flow into us through them an affection from a love of what is good and true from heaven and an affection from a love of what is evil and false from hell. So to the extent that our own affection agrees with what is flowing in, we accept its influence in our thinking. This is because our more inward thought is in complete accord with our affection or love. To the extent that our own affection does not agree, we do not accept the influence. We can see from this that thoughts are not instilled into us by spirits, but only an affection for what is good or an affection for what is evil. This gives us a choice because it gives us freedom. It means that in our thought we can accept what is good and reject what is evil, since we know from the word what is good and what is evil. What we accept in thought from affection becomes part of us, while what we do not accept in thought from affection does not become part of us. This enables us to determine the nature of the inflow into us of the good from heaven and of the evil from hell. Section 299 I have been enabled to learn where we get the anxiety, distress of mind, and inward sadness called depression. There are spirits who are not yet united with hell because they are still in their first state, which will be described later when we talk about the world of spirits. They love half-digested and noxious substances like the foods that are becoming excrement in the stomach. So they attach themselves to the same sort of matter in us because they find delight in it, and they talk with each other there out of their evil affection. The emotional tone of their conversation flows into us, and since it is contrary to our affection, it brings about a sadness and an anxious depression. While if it agrees with our affection, it brings about a sense of happiness and exhilaration. These spirits can be seen in the neighborhood of the stomach, some on the left and some on the right, some lower and some higher, nearer or farther away variously depending on the affections they are involved in. A great deal of experience has convinced me that they are the source of our anxiety of spirit. I have seen them, heard them, and felt the anxieties that well up from them. I have talked with them. They have been driven off, and the anxiety has ceased. They have come back, and the anxiety has returned. I have observed its increase and decrease as they drew near and moved away. It has become clear to me, then, where that anxiety originates that is blamed on a stomach ache by people who do not know what conscience is because they do not have any. Section 300 Heaven's union with us is like the union of one person with another, but is a union with the deeper levels of our minds, and therefore with our spiritual or inner person. There is, though, a union with our natural or outer person by correspondences, which union will be discussed in the next chapter when I deal with heaven's union with us by means of the word. Section 301 I will also explain in the next chapter that heaven's union with us and our union with it are of such a nature that each relies on the other. Section 302 
I have talked with angels about the union of heaven with the human race, and have told them that church people actually do say that everything good is from the Lord, and that there are angels with us. But few people really believe that angels are so close to us, much less that they are in our thought and affection. The angels have told me that they knew this kind of empty belief and talk occurred in the world, and especially, which astonished them, in the church, where people have the word that teaches them about heaven and its union with them. Yet, in fact, the union is so vital that we could not think the least thought apart from the spirits who are with us. Our spiritual life depends on this. They said that the reason for this ignorance was that people believe they live on their own without any connection with the ultimate reality of life, and do not know that there is this connection through the heavens. Yet if that connection were severed, we would instantly drop down dead. If we believed the way things really are, that everything good comes from the Lord and everything evil from hell, then we would not take credit for the good within us or blame for the evil. Whenever we thought or did anything good, we would focus on the Lord, and any evil that flowed in we would throw back into the hell it came from. But since we do not believe in any inflow from heaven or from hell, and therefore believe that everything we think and intend is in us and from us, we make the evil our own and defile the good with our feeling that we deserve it.